Welcome to my lecture online. Our next topic in friction is called the belt. We're going to talk about belt friction and in particular a flat belt. We're going to derive the equation that determines the difference in the tension on the two ends of the belt when it's situated over a circular drum or peg or some round object here or post around which the belt is wrapped. Notice here that the angle between this line and this line, which delineates the portion of the belt that's touching the drum here, is called beta. We take a small segment of that and call that small little angle d theta, and we're going to take a look at it in a little bit more detail over there. Now notice that the tension T2 here will be greater than the tension T1 if the belt is moving in this direction. There is going to be friction between the belt and the drum or the peg, and we'll call that mu sub s. That's going to be the friction between the belt and the drum or the belt and the peg. Now over here we take a look at this small section. We take a small angle delta theta, and we're going to figure out the difference in the tension on the right side and the left side because of the small amount of the belt that's touching the drum here. Also notice that if this angle here is delta theta, then there is delta theta divided by 2 and delta theta divided by 2 relative to the horizontal. The friction force between the belt on that small section and the drum is caused by the normal force times the coefficient of static friction. Now the normal force will be a very small portion of the total normal force found on the entire belt here, so we're going to call that a delta m. Now, how do we find the difference in the tension between the right and the left side of a belt going over a drum like that or over a peg like that? Well, the way we can do that is to sum up all the force in the x direction, sum up all the force in the y direction, and solve that simultaneously. So let's try to do that. We're going to sum up all the force in the x direction. And of course, that's going to be equal to zero. Now, what are those? Well, we have the t plus delta t times the cosine of that angle. So we have t plus delta t, that's the force to the right, times the cosine of the angle delta theta divided by 2. Now we have minus this force right here, so minus t times the cosine of delta theta divided by 2. And we have the friction force. That would be minus the friction force, which is delta n times mu sub s. And of course, all that adds up to zero. Now right away, you can see that if you have a t times a cosine of delta theta over 2 and a minus t times a cosine of delta theta over 2, that this will cancel out with this one right there. Now we're going to add up all the forces in the y direction. The sum of all the forces in the y direction add up to zero. And now we have the force upward, which is a delta n, so this is equal to a plus delta n, minus the two components of the tensions downward. So on the left side, we have minus tension times the sine of delta theta over 2, and minus tension plus delta tension times the sine of delta theta over 2. Unfortunately, here, the t sine delta 2 over 2 doesn't cancel out with that one because they're both negative, and that all adds up to zero. What we're going to do now, though, is we're going to solve the second equation for delta n and substitute that in here because we don't know what delta n is, and so that will help us. That will at least get rid of the one unknown in here. So when we solve for delta n, we take those two, plug and put them on the other side. So basically, what we can say is the second equation then becomes the following. Zero is equal to delta t times a cosine of delta theta over 2. And then this is gone, and the t is gone. And then we have the minus. Instead of delta n, we're going to plug in the positive of this. So minus, that gives us t sine of delta theta over 2. And here that would be minus the quantity t plus delta t times the sine of delta theta over 2, and the whole thing multiplied by mu sub s. All right, still quite a mess, but I think we can somehow simplify that. Well, first of all, we have a minus t sine delta t uh, delta theta over 2, and we have it here again. So we can combine those, makes it a little simpler, and we can factor out a, a sine theta delta theta over 2. 
So that gives us the following. Zero is equal to delta t times the cosine of delta theta over two, and then minus the quantity. So we have two t, and we have a plus delta theta, plus delta t, I should say. The whole thing multiplied times the sine of delta theta over two times mu sub s. I think that simplifies it a little bit more. What we're going to do next is really a mathematical trick with a little bit of foresight. Essentially, what we want to do is we want to find a relationship between the difference in the tension as a function of the size of the angle. So, that means if I take the delta t here and divide it by delta theta, I now have a differential, a form of differential, between the change in the tension and the change in the angle, a relationship between the two. And so I think that's how we're going to approach it. Also, we're going to take the limit of all this as delta theta and delta t goes to zero, and so we realize that the sine of, let's say, sine of x divided by x goes to one when you reach the limit. We can simplify this whole equation when we have a little bit of foresight. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to first divide both sides of the equation by a delta theta. So we're going to divide the left side by delta theta, which is still zero, and the right side, on this term, we get delta theta, and here we have, divide this here by a delta theta. <clears throat> now, here we'd like to have a delta theta divided by 2. For that exact reason, when we take the limit, this will then go to 1. I have a 2 here, so I can take that 2 and put it down here, but then of course I have to worry about that one right there. So I'll put a plus here. I'm going to take this 2, I'm going to factor out a 2, which means I'm going to need a 1 half factor out the 2 over here, so that's what I did. I factor out the 2, but of course I multiply this in, I should get the same thing again, 2t plus delta t. And then I bring this 2 down here. So I'm going to get rid of this 2 and bring it down here. So it's a mathematical trick. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to take the limit. We're going to allow delta t and delta theta go to zero. So we end up with differentials. So that's what we're doing here. So we make the angle smaller and smaller and smaller. So we get an exact relationship between the change in the tension and the amount of angle over which the belt rests on the drum or the peg. So let's do that. So we're taking the limit as delta t goes to zero and delta theta goes to zero. And when I do that, I get the following thing. So we have zero is equal to, this becomes dt d theta. That's what we're looking for. Times the cosine of delta theta divided by two as delta theta goes to zero. So that, get, that means in the limit, we get the cosine of zero, which is equal to one. Minus, here we have t plus a half delta t. Now delta t also goes to zero, so this goes to zero. So we end up with simply a t there times the sine of delta theta divided by two divided by delta theta divided by two. And again, in the limit, if we have the sine of x divided by x and x goes to zero, that ratio goes to one. So this becomes one as well. And then we have mu sub s, and the equation simplifies tremendously. If we then write it with this on one side and then on the other side, let me go over here. We can now say that the relationship dt d theta is equal to t times mu sub s. So now we need to solve that equation. It's a simple differential equation. We can solve that by separating the variables. So we end up with dt over t is equal to mu sub s times d theta. So this becomes the natural log of t evaluated from t1 to t2 because that's what we want to do. We want to go between the two right there is equal to mu sub s times the integral of that, and that would be theta evaluated from uh, zero to beta. Beta, of course, would be the total angle subtended by those two lines that indicate where the bell touches the drum. So what we did really was we integrated both sides, and when we do that, we get the following. So on the left side, we end up with the natural log of t2 minus the natural log of t1 is equal to mu sub s times beta, because when you plug in the upper, lower limit, you get zero, the upper limit, you get beta. And then this can be written as a fraction, so we can say the natural log of t2 over t1 
is equal to mu sub s times beta. Now that's a good equation. This tells us the relationship between the difference in the tension between T2 and T1 and the static coefficient of friction and the angle that that subtends. But it's better if you take both sides of the equation and make it the exponent of uh, E. When you do that, you, when you take the antilog, in other words, you get T2 divided by T1 is equal to E to the mu sub s times beta, like that. And that's a better way to write the equation. Which means, if you know the coefficient of static friction between the belt and the drum, and you know the angle over which the belt subtends, the, how much of the belt touches the drum, then you can figure out the difference in the tension or the ratio in tension 2 divided by tension 1. If you know one of them, you can calculate the other one. And we'll show you some examples of how to do that. This is, by the way, a very handy equation to use in many examples, in many situations, where you're trying to figure out the difference in the tension of a belt that goes around the post or goes around the peg, and you're applying pressure or tension on both sides on that belt. So this is how you get the equation. Now we're going to show you some examples of how to apply the equation.